What was the creepiest or most paranormal thing that's ever happened to you? Hey Redditors, today's video is all about the spookiest, weirdest, and downright craziest stories straight from Reddit. From ghostly encounters to things that make you question reality, these stories will send shivers down your spine. So, grab your seat and get comfy because we're about to dive into the creepiest tales from Reddit users. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay updated with us. Number 15. Creepy for me, I was having a tense conversation with someone that I was close to years ago. The conversation quickly devolved into a passive-aggressive fight that ended with the other person getting in the car and driving away. As I started heading back inside, the other person came back, got out of the car, and started our conversation again. The tone of voice was totally different, and the stance was different, and the feeling in the air was completely off. I don't know how else to explain it. As the conversation progressed, the other person started saying some nasty and mean things that were completely out of character. I said, this isn't like you person. They said, what makes you think that I'm person? I remember continuing the conversation and talking to the person for a long time, but I don't remember anything specific. I do remember becoming more and more alarmed and knowing something wasn't right. Finally, I told the person to go home. They complied and left. I went back inside and started telling my sibling about the situation when the doorbell rang, maybe two to three minutes had passed. It was the person coming back to apologize for the original fight. They had been driving around town for a long time and didn't want to go home leaving things unresolved. I asked why they had said some of the things from the last conversation and they looked at me like I was crazy. They had no idea what I was talking about. Totally could have been lying, but that whole situation just felt dark scared the hell out of me. Number 14. I was a manager of computer repair for a retailer a couple year ago. We had a client's computer in the back running various malware and virus scans. I was doing morning paperwork in the back near the computer. This padded screening saver on displaying random photos from the My Pictures folder, various family members, children's birthday parties, the usual stuff. Then from then of my eye I swear to God I saw a picture of a woman from the shoulders up with her throat cut. As soon as I realized what I was making out I directed my full attention and it was back to photos of a car show. As the day went on I though nothing of it and proceeded continue my work until I was bringing another customer's to the back to work on and again from my peripheral I could have sworn I saw a bloody body and bound in the trunk of a car. At that moment I began to freak out. I grabbed one of my employees explained to him the situation. We then sat for 10 minutes and watched this screensaver. It is against company policy to search through the client's personal files without absolute just cause. We then proceeded to see a photo of two bodies in a shallow grave out in the woods and another photo of a severed hand down in kitchen drawer. I then went and got the general manager and informed him of the situation and had him view this screensaver. We then felt that I would be in everyone's best interest to contact law enforcement. In about 15 minutes later owner of the computer and another gentleman show up I proceed to tell him that his computer is not ready and it will be a while. He then informs me that he was called there because someone reported there was some photographs of a bristly bird that we had found. I showed him his computer and then his partner then begins to laugh at him. Apparently, he went against police policy and took some of his work home with him and had never noticed his work photos were being used as a screensaver. TLDR, a detective unknowingly brings me his computer filled with gory homicide pictures that get mixed in with his screensaver. I soil myself thinking I am dealing with him. All the cops and the detective returns to investigate his own computer. Number 13. I dropped my mug onto the floor accidentally, heard no noise when it hit the floor, go to pick it up, and it's gone. I honestly went to bed and pondered what happened and slept feeling incredibly uncomfortable. Bug in the matrix type of thing. Number 12. When I was in college I house sat for my parents. I'm a bit of a scaredy cat so I locked every door leading up to the bedroom when I went to bed at night. I had the weirdest dream that someone unlocked each door and turned on every light. I felt cold and woke up to my dog barking. All of the lights in the house were on and every door opened and unlocked. My dog wouldn't stop barking and nothing in the hallway. I sat in the shower with my dog and a phone the rest of night scared to death. Number 11. A lady's voice coming from my closet asking for help. My closet door was cracked and she said, Help me. I see through the cracks. I see. Every synonym for the word scared was coursing through my body. I went and checked to see if there was a woman in need of help, but nothing was in there but my clothes and shoes. Number 10. 
This is a true story. It happened about seven years ago. The house was on the Colorado River part of a gated community type thing. We were in the Cali Desert. The old man found our house hours later because of our description and the buggy parked out front. He spent some time with us explaining his life story and describing his large family. He was, hopefully still is, a retired man living with his wife and dog in one of the neighboring communities and went out to adventure without telling his wife. No one even knew he was out there. He was really concerned with eventually telling his wife what really happened for obvious reasons. The dog broke a couple legs on the fall and he unsuccessfully attempted to rescue him, hence being trapped in a hole. I'm certainly no hero, just fortunate to be in the right place at the right time to help someone desperately in need. I will post a picture of the man and dog in the morning as I'm preparing for the football kickoff. I was miles deep into the middle of the desert driving a dune buggy with friends and stopped to check out an abandoned mine that my buddy had explored in before. My buddy stayed behind while the girls and I went inside to look around. About 100 yards into the mine a man's voice calls out help me please, along with strange whimpering noises. We all froze and stared at each other wide-eyed for a few seconds before the voice called out again and the girls took off running for the exit. I wanted to run too, but something was telling me it was my buddy playing a prank on us and I didn't want to fall for it. Convinced he was calling down from some sort of hole above I called back and followed the voice hoping for trimmy fence over his little joke. Instead, I found an old man and his injured dog trapped deep down at 30 feet. Drop! Saved both their lives. Number 9. My grandfather passed away when I was 8 and my little brother was 2 or 3-ish. He had this big lazy boy chair in the living room that he always planted himself in. Everyone knew this chair was grandpa's chair. Anyway, we went down to my grandparents' house in Florida for a long weekend to attend the funeral, etc. We were all chatting the first night there in the living room and my mom was sitting in the lazy boy's chair. My little brother goes up to my mom and says grandpa wants his chair back. My mom asks him where grandpa is, thinking he probably doesn't understand death, to which he responds, he's right behind you. My mom bolted off that sofa immediately. Number 8. I was sleeping in my basement, pretty much my bedroom, and I woke up at some random time in the night for no reason. Rolled over and saw a black figure, probably around 5'10", and a typical male physique, standing at the side of my bed. It was standing between the bed and the stairs so there was no way to nope out, I just rolled over and straight up started praying. I rolled back over and it was gone. The next morning, I was in the shower, also in the basement, and the curtain was pushed to the side, not like all the way, but it noticeably moved. Then when I got out of the shower, my cello's D string was plucked three times, then rung out, which was lying against my chair in the basement. Then I went upstairs and my brother had a handprint that reached across his neck and cheek. It was too big to be his hand, but he was perfectly fine, and he slept through the night uninterrupted. Number 7. In the house I grew up in, it always felt like you were being watched. I'd see shadows out of the corner of my eye and dark mists that would dissolve when I looked straight at them. My older sister was always scared of the attic especially. She would barricade the door when we were left home alone. I went into the attic quite often to get various things. It's where we kept large toy containers, old clothes, and stuffed animals, and I just liked seeing what I could find. It always felt like I was being watched, though. One time I went up there, and as I reached the top of the stairs, I saw a large, translucent alien-shaped white head looking at me from behind a box. I froze, terrified, and locked eyes with it for a few seconds before it slowly lowered itself down to hide. I turned right back around and left, telling myself I had imagined it, but scared to go in the attic for years after that. I didn't tell anyone for years. My parents eventually sold the house, and we moved, and I never felt the same weight anywhere else I've lived. Number 6. 20 or so years ago, while living in New Mexico. Driving east on Highway 60 at night between Vaughn and at Sumner. Two of us in the car and noticed a really bright light on the right rear side. I mean really bright. We then remembered that the train tracks were there. So we kept driving without really thinking about it. Well, the light stayed with us, which was weird because trains usually don't go that fast out there. So then my friend rolls down the window and looked back to see what the hell it is and suddenly the light vanishes. Also no sound, so now we're a little freaked. We pull over to check things out. Well, a new realization sets in. There are no train tracks next to the road on this section of road, 34.486698, minus 
So now we're really freaked out and bolt out of there ASAP. We told our story to people at work and of course caught some grief, but that's what happened to us. Number 5. Somewhat ironically something happened to me last night. I got home from work very early in the morning. 2.30 a.m. my house has an entryway or mudroom before you actually get into the house. I open the front door, step inside, close front door and proceed to try and find the key to get through the next door to get in my house. So the only light in this entryway is through the glass on the front door, the rest of the room is completely black, and I can barely see my hands in front of my face. All of a sudden I start to hear this, buzzing slash vibrating, noise behind me off to the right. House is old so maybe just weird house noises. Still looking for the key when I notice that the noise is getting louder closer and it has risen in pitch to something like of a woman was humming loudly. Maybe it's just ringing in my ear. Out of the corner of my eye I see a shadow that I thought was from light reflecting outside move towards me creeping along the wall. That's when I noticed the vibrating noise was also getting closer to me and it seemed to be coming in the same direction as the now moving shadow. I'm shitting my pants trying to open this damn door and when I finally do the noise stops, the shadow disappears and I'm hoping it was all in my head. Number 4. When I was about 5 or 6 I was sitting on the back deck of my family home, an old farmhouse. I remember this old lady walking up the steps and going straight into the house without acknowledging me. I follow her inside to see who it is and my mom is standing in the kitchen, room right off the back deck. I ask her who's here and she gives this confused look. Around that time, the original owner of the farmhouse died and I am 100% convinced it was her. Number 3. My grandmother's house had a very distinct smell. Nothing bad though, just a grandmother's house smell. Anyway, when she came to visit us she always used to sit in a specific chair in the living room. Shortly after she passed away my father, my older sister and myself came home and when we walked into the living room and we all smelled her. My dad said hello Ethel and the smell disappeared. I would be skeptical if just one of us experienced this, but it was all three of us. Number 2. My brother and I were home alone one night watching TV my mother was working a night shift and my father was out. Father came home and pushed the door ajar and poked his head through to say hello. We both turned around and said hello back, and father closed the door. 30 seconds after, another man opens the door to say hello. We both turn around and say hello back, man closes the door. We assume a friend of my father has come back to the house too. Anyway about 5 minutes later I head into the kitchen where my father was making dinner or whatever and I'm expecting to see his friend again. I saw that he was alone making dinner and assumed his friend was upstairs in the bathroom. I asked my father who his friend is. My father looks at me and asks him what friend. I replied, the guy who came back with you. Dad looks at me thinking I'm some sort of weirdo. He says if I came back home on my own. Biggest what? I've ever experienced, my brother was freaked out to the max. Remembering the man's face, he was pale looking and had bright white hair. Number 1. One afternoon in college I came back from classes and decided to sit on the couch and have a snack. After that, I just passed out. I had a nightmare of some bloody faced demonish thing screaming in my ear at the top of its lungs. Woke up and went about the rest of my day. My roommate comes back later that night and goes into his room as I'm sitting in the main living area. At some point, he lets out this random startled scream which leads to me running down the hall to see what's going on. He looks at me and goes, I swear to God someone with a bloody face just walked from your bedroom into the bathroom. I never told him about the nightmare I had earlier in the day. I didn't sleep for two days. Nothing ever happened again. Alright folks, that was one wild ride through spooky town. Thanks for hanging out and diving into these crazy stories with us. Your comments and stories keep this place buzzing, so keep them coming. If these tales gave you goosebumps, hit that like button and subscribe for more mind-bending adventures into the unknown. Stay awesome, stay curious, and who knows, maybe your own freaky encounter will be in the spotlight next time. Until then, take it easy and stay spooky, friends. Catch you later.